we here again. Y'all think I'm playing. I ain't joking. I want to get on this and I want to talk about this stuff. And I want to get, I've been wanting to get this shit out of my system to y'all for the longest. So I'm here. We get a few more people in here because they, hi, oh, Latoya Dominique, the first one. Lucky lefty, she beat you, dog. But hold up, y'all y'all in here at the same time. No, guys. It's a lot of people here at the same time. All right, yeah, we do. I told y'all, I got three or four shows to do. Y'all Y'all may not like them, y'all may not, but I'm giving y'all the truth about shit so y'all would know. You understand? Tina Street, tell them, Tina. Tell them to smash that like button. Don't nobody do it like we do it over here. Ain't that right, Bingham? Bigum BX, tell him. Megan Davis, what's up, ma? What's good with you? Jawoo 72. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all saw the title. Diddy Fathers didn't die behind Zip's hands. You know, we gonna do this one. You know what I'm saying? Because people are putting out felonious information, man. And then people are running back at me saying this and saying that when it ain't true. When it ain't true, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you what really happened. Now, you evaluate what I said and what I say. And it's even in a couple of magazines. I'm not home, but I got one of the magazines where it was in. But I got this from the horse's mouth. That means the big gangster brought me in, told his lieutenant, I want to speak to Big Gene. I want to speak to Big Gene. But we get into it. We're going to get a couple of people in here. Let me give a couple of shout out, you know, for who's out there. I like that uh, StreamYard joint better than the YouTube thing. But like I told you, the StreamYard was messing up crazy. You don't know who Zip was? All right. Zip was the one that they said that gave the gun, allegedly gave the gun, the, the shit that, the, the shit Greg Cady made up to try to bring Puff into the shit like that. The Zip gave the gun to Keefe D, the gangster crip that didn't have weapons. Y'all don't know how big Keefe D was back then. You understand? And for him not, he got to get a gun from Zip. That's the bullshit that Greg Cady lie that he told. All that shit gonna blow up in their face, y'all. And I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna gloat like the goat. I found out where it came from and I, pre I pretty much know who did. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do some more stuff today because I'm gonna make a phone call after this show, you know, because something else is going down. You know what I mean? Libra Queen, what up, mama? Libra Queen, why they say Capricorn women and Aries women and Taurus women are the best? Why they be saying that? Do you know? Peace, J. Wu, 72, out there in Connecticut, right? Y'all ready? Y'all ready to get this started? All right, check this out. Rashonda Haywood say Libra's rule. Four hearts. <laughs> anyway, check this out. I don't know. Them Aries women, man, they're... they're, they're, they're They'll take your heart, twist it, untwist it, give it back to you, and still have you loving them. <laughs> Here comes the pain. <laughs> Tina Street. Check it out. Now, everybody want to portray that they know shit that they know. 
and they come on here to gain y'all attention. So it makes their channel grow and become something. People sit here and tell you a bunch of bullshit. Like they know what the perfect high is. Do you understand that? People will tell you a bunch of bullshit like they know what the purple high is and where to cop it from. And it's just not happening. Now, I don't like mentioning dudes' names and everything like that as far as when it's some kind of confrontation. But I'm going to tell you straight up right here. Reggie, you was dead wrong about Puff Father and, and the situation with Puff Father and Zip. Dead wrong, brother. Whoever gave you that information was telling you some felonious bullshit and a lie. But I truly believe you made that shit up, bro, for views. You made it up, bro. You've been caught a couple of times lying on here and saying shit. And the people came out. Like you said, don't drop that, don't raise that gun. Don't raise that gun. Remember? Remember, brother? Nigga, I'm on my bullshit. Because I'm going to be on my bullshit from now on. You come at me, I'm going to come back right at you. Except these old sucker-ass niggas who don't know me or I never had a conversation with, I ain't got to say nothing to them. They know who I'm talking about, who want to make a whole big thing about me and say all this shit. People, people put me on to that shit like that. I can, yo, fuck you and feed you beans, man, because you ain't nothing. Because them type niggas, Reggie, they not going to, they not, they not even going to run up to me and if they see me, they, they ain't going to even let, let it be known because they not built like that. I'm talking to you because me and you used to have conversations, brother. And whoever told you that bullshit was wrong. And if you was just blatantly out here lying to the folks, you dead wrong for that shit. Now, let me get down to what's happening first with Puff Father. Then I'll tell you about the shit that went down on the auto dialogue that some of y'all niggas got wrong. Because y'all want to read a title. Puff Daddy was, Puff Father was driving cabs. And he was a low level drug dealer trying to get in the game. He was working for a crew that ran with New York Freddy. My OG, my man, Omar, who used to represent our block when we needed stuff for block parties, when we needed stuff for, you know, boat rides and stuff like that, he would slide the extra cash that we needed. God rest in, rest in peace. He died of that COVID shit. Omar. I had him on the channel talking one time. Omar is a good dude. That's the one, if you look at the documentary that New York Freddy said, I came out and this nigga had a rain suit on. The whole rain gear hustling when he was young. He was hustling for him. New York Freddy did his time standing up like a man. He did close to 30 some years or better. Lil' Mo, what up with you? So now, my OG, Omar, I don't know Freddie from a can of paint. All I know is I was running the Kingdom Security. In New York. Jay-Z talking about all that shit him and Lisa Key. He said, Mo, in the Kingdom when... Dane Dashnam was sponsoring it with pro kids. The uniforms, the sneakers, the whole nine yards. 
He told me, Omar, yo, New York Freddy want to holler at you, want to talk to you. I'm like, the only time I heard of New York Freddy, you know, you about the drug game, he went away and stuff, went on a documentary. They were talking about him because he was dealing with Frank Mathis. Frank Mathis is the biggest drug dealer that ever came through the United States. He was dealing with the French Connection. There's a couple of documentaries on there. There's about to be a movie on him. He was bigger than Frank Lucas and all of them. He was about to go to war with the Italian mob. They the one who snitched on them and put the government on him. Frank Mathis. So now, New York Freddy calls me over. He tells me, Omar told me you're a good man. You honorable. And you're about your business. I know that you're a parole officer. But I hear you held down a lot of people and you look out. Well, I, you know, I make sure they know what they're supposed to do and what, what they're supposed to have, but I'm not doing no, I'm not doing nothing I was supposed to do. So I'm that quiet listening to this gangster who is blessing me. I'm listening. You hear what I said on the last show? I'm all ears. So New York Freddy is like, I tried to have a meeting with Russell Simmons and he denied it. I was like, you trying to have a, a, a rap career? <laughs> you want a <the> rap career? <laughs> you want to come out? <laughs> OG New York Freddy <laughs> and spit some new balls? <laughs> No, I should be laughing about that, man. God bless him. But I'm wondering. But I'm still listening. I ain't opening my mouth. Come on, Renzo. We 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 talking about shit. Don't wonder if I if listen to me. It ain't a rapper. It ain't a group that was in the late 80s all the way up to 2004 that came out of New York that I didn't meet or didn't know or wasn't around. Is that enough for you? Okay. So you just think about all the people that you know and say, just start checking them off. I met them, seen them, been around them. I worked at the top strip club in, in the city, Sue's Rendezvous. In Mount Vernon, shout out to Mount Vernon, all my people up there. Held down one of the top clubs, the Mirage, on 57th Street. Worked for Diddy. Ran one of the top crews. Same gang and slick in the family. Boat rides, picnics, all that. Leave me alone now. So now, New York Freddy telling me that he had to get a meeting with Russell Simmons and he denied and I'm like okay I'm listening when he's telling me Russell Simmons used to work for me he used to go to the store and get or go and run to the cleaners and get my clothes for me he worked at my record company down on 50-something street in Manhattan. You heard me? Russell Simmons used to work for New York Freddy's record company before he came with all that shit that we know of. Used to go to the store for him.
and New York Freddie was a dope dealer. Now we know how Russell got his habit. Now we know how Russell got his habit. New York Freddie told me he used to work for me. This when the police came up in his company, he had a million dollars of a hundred dollar bills, a million dollars in a glass table. Yo, boss, can I clean that table? <laughs> I'll get the Windex. Now, Russell denied it. So now, he wanted to have a meeting with Puff, too. Me and Puff was still cool. It was 2004. 2003, 2004. I just wasn't fucking with him no more. 2004, 2004, something like that around that. I just wasn't fucking with him. But he was coming to the park. When he come over to the kingdom, he gave a nigga a wad of hundreds like this. And the nigga, by the time it got to me, because I seen him when he gave it to the nigga. They was about like that. The nigga Paul came over to yo, Gene Puff said, take care of the security. I said, yo, take care of this stuff. Nigga, I don't work for you niggas. I don't want that shit. Give it back to him. Now, should have took it. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> Old Latoya. Latoya said, Reggie should take a couple seats and sit back and thank God he's still here. Let me get to it. So now, Puff denied the meeting with New York Freddie. And New York Freddie said, I was going to sit down and tell him the whole truth about his father. I said this. I told y'all this story. But the only reason I'm repeating this story because Reggie came out with some bullshit about Zip. And Zip wasn't getting down like that. Had he not said nothing about Zip, I wouldn't be opening my motherfucking mouth. But I had a lot of respect for Zip. I had a lot of respect for Zip. He put that lie on YouTube about Zip. And it wasn't true. Now, New York Freddie said they had cops at that time that was on the payroll. And you know they was giving the cops $10,000 a week. That was some money back in the 70s and the 60s and shit like that. They was paying cops $10,000 a week. And New York Freddy was a type of motherfucking gangster when the cops was coming getting paid. Motherfucker, nigga, what did you do this week? Did you work this week? I ain't get, did you, did, did, I ain't get no information. I ain't get this, I ain't get that. He was gangster all, I, all the way. And this is coming from people who knew him and from him being at the park, he had his chair right in the middle of the kingdom. Nobody sat at it. He had that respect. So now, he said, Puff Daddy used to work, Puff Father used to work with our crew. But he was coming in at an underlink. When he got to the point where he was making a little money, he got trusted with a little bit more weight. Puff 
father got caught in a sting. And when he got caught in the sting, they did a take confession and a, made a written statement out of all the people that he was over, that he was under in their crew. The cop snitched on Puff Father and told New York Freddie that he did a written statement and a tape confession and said the only reason he was doing it because he had to go to a wedding. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> he said the only reason he was doing it because he had to go to a wedding. It wasn't his wedding. It was one of his best friends. One of his best friends that bought him in the game. It was one of his best friends that was getting married that he didn't want to miss the wedding, so he told. And New York Freddy, when he got the information, he went to the best friend. He said, you got to go. I want him out of here. New York Freddy told me this himself. God bless the dead. He's dead now. To tell him. I didn't tell him until after he died. Somebody said they can't hear me. How about that? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Hold on, who that? Hello from Stockholm, Sweden. Dalkirk, out there in Sweden. What up with your boy, boy? Little muffled. It's a little muffled. It's better now. Jones family. So now, they said I'm good. So now, he told him he had to go. So now, I still ain't open my mouth. I was listening. Like old boy said, God give you two ears, one mouth. Sometimes you better know how to shut your mouth. I'm listening to New York Freddy. Puff Father wasn't a hustler at all like they were saying. Like he was, like this motherfucker, um... Frank Lucas, yeah, Puff Dad, he just saying that shit because Diddy was big like he is right now. He was an underlink. He was an underlink. Who said that? <laughs> Somebody said they hit the blunt. Who that? Sheikah? Sika, Sika Prada. She said she hitting a blunt for her favorite big story. <laughs> All right, so now, New York Freddy said, the nigga who killed him was the one who was crying the hardest at the funeral, carrying the casket. He's dead now, too. The one who killed him was at the funeral
carrying the casket. Freddie Myers said the one who killed him was crying the hardest at the funeral carrying the casket. Nigga, that's a, Freddie was a gangster. A real gangster. They said when the feds went up in his house in Mount Vernon, he had stacks of $100 bills and $50 bills up to the walls and basement. They couldn't even get in. That's how much money they had back then. Uh-oh, Captain Crunch, be quiet. Be quiet, Captain Crunch. Be quiet, Captain Crunch. Hollywood who? Be quiet, not California. <laughs> be quiet, Captain Crunch. You know I'm telling the truth, right, Cap? Because you just called it out. You just called it out. Bro, I'm doing a show right now. I'm going to hit you back, all right? James T. Robinson, thanks for that cash app. That cash app, if y'all forgot it, is Big Gene 52 That's on cash app and PayPal. Look at somebody. Don't believe it. You know the people Gene talking about. Nigga, if he said Hollywood, he know who I'm talking about. Go look at YouTube. Look at Freddie Myers. You could tell he was a gangster back then. Now, let's get to the sexy part of this. Everybody was hitting me up. You don't think Puff Mother is cute? You don't think this, that, about Puff Mother and stuff like that? You you lost you lost a job because you ain't sexy. I would have boned her. I would have did that. Nigga, that's y'all. I have principles. I have morals. I have scruples about myself. It was Miss Combs the whole time. If I said I didn't think that she was attractive to me, that's to me. At that time in my life, you had to be pecan, tan, caramel, bright light, chocolate dark. I wasn't turning down nothing but my collar. <laughs> but I'm not dealing with no woman, no, no, nobody's mama like that. I'm saying that to y'all. No matter what she may have wanted or thought, Reggie said she was fucking with Zip. She wasn't. Miss Combs liked guys young. She may have liked them younger than me. I know the Asian cat was. One young dumb guy. <laughs> well, he looked Asian. Anyway, I'm just letting y'all know. And y'all get to this. I'm, I gave y'all 30 minutes. But y'all listen to what I'm saying right now. If I was fucking Puff mother and I would have got with Puff's mother, that would have made me Puff Daddy. Get it? Puff Daddy. This has been Big Gene from Raw Deal, the last big night cooking and conversation. Deuces.